This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Oh Hashem. There is something very amazing on that very known and great and famous righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. There is a story about him that once during Shabbat he made an oath, he swore to, to in front of all of his students that he doesn't know anything. And Rabbi Nathan, his student, was not able to understand how, how can you make an oath like that? How can you swear on something like, what do you mean you don't know anything? How can you say, I don't know anything? You know so much. Like, you learn hundreds or thousands of books and you read every one of them a few times at least. And we know all the classes we heard from you and like the Aleph Bed, ABC, you don't know how to say Aleph Bed, given you, how can, and, and to make an oath on that, how can you swear on something like, like, I don't know anything, you don't know that your name is Rab Nachman, that people call you Nachman, you don't know that you're Nachman, how can you say I don't know anything, you don't know that there is a creator to the world, how can you say, I, and now to make an oath on that, to swear, I swear, I don't know anything. But then he explained, and he said, that the purpose of knowing means that what did you achieve by knowing is that knowledge that you don't know anything. That's the highest level of, of knowledge. Knowing that you don't know anything. Because for an example, now you look at the flower, you look at the box, okay, so you think you know what that box is and what it's made of, okay, a few thousands of trees in South America, not such a big deal, and uh, tissue papers, okay. If you're going to investigate a little bit more, you're going to understand that really you didn't know what it really contains, fibers and materials and colors and all kinds of things that they put inside of it and also you don't know the weight and, and the space and the sizes of this box. And like, really you don't know, you, can, you think you know, oh it's a box, it's not a box, it's also many other things. Okay so now you're a huge science and you know scientist and you know many many things about a box, okay, and you think you know. But the truth is that only your arrogance is telling you that you know what this box contains. Because if really you know how deep that box goes into its own self, you understand very easily that you don't have a clue. The atoms, how they're running inside of that box, and what behind the atoms, what it brings the energy into the atoms, what it runs the system. You find yourself with a huge question mark of what life is all about and what's going on. You can ask about yourself, okay, I'm telling you in my classes all the time, you should know who you are. You can never know this answer until you nullify yourself completely to the Creator. And even then, when you nullify yourself completely, let's say now your pure has a drop of, 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 of the purest water, the water that you, they were using in, in the Beit HaMikdash, in the, in the temple, that the high priest was using those pure water to throw them on the altar. Okay, now you cleaned yourself and you're exactly like that pure water of of Beit HaMikdash. Even now, as that holy drop of water, when a person finishes his lifetime after 120 years and his pure soul go rise up back to heaven, it comes back to the sea of all souls. So now, think of that holy, clean, purest drop of water that falls back into the endless ocean of souls in heaven, 
Now, for one drop of water that falls into the ocean, so it's true, it's now known for all that people are not able to find that drop anymore in the ocean. It's spreading and growing and, and melting and disappearing into the rest of the water over there in the sea. But the truth is that after one hour and a half, after three hours, after one day, still, realistically, that's how you say that word? If you're going to check the real size of that water, let's say you're going to put ink inside of it, some kind of material that you can measure, that you can see, that you can visualize, you will see that it's expanded for one feet square, one square feet, five square feet, twelve, fifteen, five hundred, okay, still like it's here, it's somewhere, you can collect it if you will want. Even after one year, it's going to be in a certain area in the ocean and only in a certain depth of the ocean and not more. And after seven years, after 50 years, even if it will expand and expand and expand, it's going to be somewhere. There is a measure to the, to the size of, of, of how fast that one drop can expand and grow and cover. So also as the most holiest, spiritual, pure drop of, of your own soul, when it will come back to heaven and it will be united with infinity, you cannot cover infinity ever. It's like no matter how close you will be to the Creator, you will just gonna understand that you still don't know anything about anything. Because that understanding will never gonna end. And that's who that you are. And this is why Rabbi Nachman of Breslev also said that when a person knows that all of things that happens to him in his life are all coming for his own good, so that aspect is in the aspect of living your life in the world to come. That aspect is like when you live in heaven, in the world to come. Why? Because if in every situation of your life, you will learn that no matter what that happened to you right now is for your good, for your own good, you will learn from every situation something good about yourself. You will learn, you will grow, you will develop. And that's exactly what that happens to us in the world to come. After 120 years in the world to come, like we described that drop of water, life are only expanding and growing and getting greater and greater and being uplifted and, and fantastic and we're learning more and expanding and growing and enjoying and more satisfied. And, and, and pleasure, then every good thing that you can think to yourself, you will have in the world to come. But it will never gonna end. In the eternal life, in the world to come, we're just growing and growing with no end, and there is no end to this growing. And it's fantastic, it's amazing, it's beautiful. Thank you, Hashem, we're blessing the Creator for that gift that we will be able to know more and to learn more. But Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is telling us that also here in this world, when you set your mind to learn and you're ready to believe that everything that happens to you in your life is coming because of the endless loving kindness of the Creator that is bringing all of your life situations for you for a good reason, for an amazing cause, when you know that, you can learn, you have the ability to grow and to develop in the aspect of eternal life in the world to come from every situation, from every single moment of your life, you will take something good and going to bring it into the treasures of your knowledge. But the purpose is to remember and to know that this is an eternal mission 
that even if you know something today, tomorrow you're going to understand that there is more to it. That you can also add more wisdom to what that you learned yesterday. And for that, a person must set his mind. And the main way to do that is with our will. Your will to learn is the tool that the Creator gave you to learn with. If you want to learn, you will learn. And if you don't want to learn, you will reject the knowledge. And then you will refuse to the development that is treasured in that situation. So something hard now is happening to you. There is no problem to bring out an amazing, fantastic lesson from that situation that took place in your life. The problem is that a person finds it hard to accept because he doesn't want to experience that kind of experience. So you in that moment are blocking, refusing to live eternal life with the Creator that brought that life situation to you, that experience to you right now. But when you're throwing yourself on the Creator and you believe with complete faith, with emunah shlema, that all of the life experiences, that all things that happens to you in your life are coming for your own good, by the loving kindness of the Creator, then you will find that will to learn and you will learn from every situation in your life and you will live eternal life under the holy wings of the Creator. And you will see His amazing supervision on every particle of your life. In every situation, you're going to see, Hey, it's a shame. Hey, it's a shame. Hey, that was the Creator. Hey, now I understand. Oh, that connects to that, and that connects to that. And suddenly, your life is a built-in puzzle. Every moment of your life, you're just finding more diamonds and rubies and good stones that belongs to you. Those are the sparks that you've been sent to find in the universe. But for that, you need to tune yourself. You need to want. You need to want. And this is why the Mishnah is saying to us, You need to force your will to become like the will of the Creator, like He wills, like He wants. Whatever He wants for me, that is what that I should want. Now, if something wrong happened, something that I don't want to happen, and I refuse, so then I'm not bending myself to His will. But sometimes... You need to be even wiser because a parent can tell his son, go to your room. And you will say to yourself with your stubbornness, okay, so if he wants me to go to the room, I'll go to the room. I'll do what you tell me. And you go with your anger and with your sadness and with all your complaints to the room to fulfill Hashem's will, your parents' will. No, that's a lie. You're not willing to do His will because you're not recognizing His will. You're just going with your negative thoughts, with your sadness and the foreign thoughts that controls your mind in that situation. In a twisted and bent way, you're interpreting this situation as, okay, you know what, I'm going to do like you said, whatever you told me to do. But the truth is that you, in your heart, refusing and arguing and rejecting your parent education, the wisdom that is hidden. Because when he tells you go, he means don't go. When he tells you to do something, he means the opposite. He means the complete opposite from what that he told you to do. Because now the reason that he tells you go to your room, you don't have job, you don't have money, I'm not going to help you to find your soul, whole soulmate, I'm not going to this, I'm not going to... All of those judgments of the Creator are just coming to wake us up to find His real will. For an example, to make life a little bit more simple. When we are walking in our lives, usually we see lackings and defaults of other people through our own glasses, eyeglasses. For an example, if you see someone that is angry, 
the reason that you recognized him as an angry person, it's coming because that inside of you there is a similar anger, a similar attribute inside of you that helps you, helps you, kills you, to see that person's defaults, this person problems. And the only reason that you can see those defaults inside of him is because that you are aware to who that you are. If you see someone that is screaming on someone else, immediately you interpret his screamings as something that familiar to you from who that you are. Now what's the problem here? That you will feel, okay, now I know it all. I know why he is angry. I know why she is upset. I know why he is in depression. And I know why they are poor. I know everything. But the truth is that you don't know. Why? Because your glasses are bent. Because you are now criticizing them and judging their situations with your glasses that are not clean. Because you have not nullified yourself yet to the Creator, so you cannot see things right, and you misinterpret your parent message to you. You don't see the truth, you just think that you recognize it because you are, you do, you recognize it from yourself. But it doesn't mean that that's the truth. It's Hashem's rebuke to you, to us, to me, but not necessarily the divine, real truth of the Creator for you to understand. What that you should understand is that you need to do tshuva on your own lackings. That you need to come back and work and fix yourself because that you just saw someone poor, that you saw someone angry, you saw someone screaming on someone else. It doesn't need to wake you up to kill him. It needs to wake you up to fix yourself, to work on yourself, to work on your own attributes and to fix, to take responsibility from things that you see outside in the world. You should, le you should learn about yourself, on how to fix yourself, on how to clean yourself, on how to work on yourself that you will nullify yourself to the will of the Creator. Like we're saying, that we need to know and to remember about our own lives, that everything that happens to us is coming for the good. Also, when we see other people, we need to try to judge them favorably. We need to see the good inside of them. And it doesn't mean that we need to accept their bad attributes, their bad manners, bad behaviors. It means that we need to keep on working hard to find the good that still lives inside of them, even if we saw that they messed up, that they failed, that they did something horrible. We need to look for the spark of knowledge, the wisdom of the Creator, what that He put inside every particle of the creation inside of every chair, every wall, every table, every detail in this creation, there is a holy spark that revives it, that gives it life, that gives a purpose and essence to that thing. There is a reason and a cause for that thing to come down through all the worlds that the Creator created and to cover it with physicality that we will have the ability to grab it, to hold it, to catch it with our mind. If it would be naked from physicality, from colors, from, from frame, from, from, from material, we wouldn't be able to hold it, to grab it, to see it, to understand what it is. But now that the Creator brought it down to this world, it's for us that we will learn some message inside of it. And only when you are aiming your eyes to the purpose, by believing that the Creator got an inner thought, that the Creator holds a certain wisdom that is hidden from my eyes, that the purpose of knowing is to know that you don't know anything, and you know that you don't know while looking at that, Thing, you will find the wisdom and the spark that it holds. Because you know that there is something in it that you don't know. And you know that you don't know it. 
And when you know that you don't know it, then you can know it. Then it becomes yours. Then you can find that spark only when you're humbling yourself completely. When your wife tells you something and you know already, you don't know anything. That is the moment that you feel, I know, it's enough. I heard it already. A thousand times you told me. That's the moment that you reject the rebuke. But the Creator, He rebukes the ones that He loves. He rebukes you because He wants to teach you the lesson. And you need to love the rebuke and not reject it. One of the ways that we're receiving and accepting the wisdom of the Creator, the wisdom of the Torah, is by loving the rebuke. You need to love the rebuke. How can you love rebukes? How can you love criticism? How can you love a situation that someone is cutting you to pieces, someone is judging you, someone is showing to you your defaults? Only when you want to learn more than you want anything else in life. Only when you desire the truth, the truth of Hashem, not your truth, not your success, not your money, your honor, your respect. Only when you want whatever He wants. And if He wants me to learn, I'm ready to learn. And if He wants my classes to be in the garbage cans or in the sewer, that's where I want to learn. If there, in that place there are those messengers that can deliver me the wisdom that I'm lack of, I want to go to Egypt for 500 years to learn over there, to, to, to the, the lowest place in hell to learn over there. If my teachers, my tutors are hidden over there under the husks and coverings of hell, I'm ready to go to hell. If there's lessons over there that are required and needed for my soul, I'm happy. I don't mind. Even if I'll go in the valley of shadows of death, I won't be scared because you're with me. Rabbi Nathan, the student of Rabbi Nachman said, even if they're going to send me to hell, I know what I'm going to do. I have a solution. What's your solution? They asked him. He answered, no problem. I'm going to start memorizing verses in Torah that I remember from Likutei Moran, and righteous people will come, the book of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, the righteous people will hear me quoting and saying Torah, wisdom of Rabbi Nachman. They will come to hell to listen my Torah. Over there in hell, it can become heaven. If you're saying words of wisdom in hell, it's heaven. Now let's say you found yourself in the lowest place in the world. You find, found yourself in a horrible place, in a dark night in an awful atmosphere, with hard people, with stubborn people around you. People are using drugs and there is a very negative music and you can't find yourself over there and it's all dark and foreign and you found yourself over there and you don't feel connected and you feel horrible and you regret that moment that you decided to come and join that party or whatever, it's just the situation. And you regret, and now you take yourself one step to the side, and you sit on one bench, and you start thinking holy thoughts with yourself, and you start thinking, probably there's a purpose for why that I'm here. Probably the Creator sent me from, for a reason here. There is something, I promise you, it's a guarantee, 100%. The Creator will send to you that person that needs your help. Suddenly someone gonna come from the shadows, from the darkness, from the night, and he will connect himself to you because of your holy thought, because of that hope that you had, because of that positive spark that crossed your mind for a second. And he will recognize that spark inside of you and he will come through the darkness to you and he will ask you, Hey, how are you? What's going on? What are you doing? What are we doing? And you will start talking to him from your broken heart, words of wisdom. And suddenly that night, 
suddenly that awful party that you found yourself in will become an amazing event for you and might be a life changing for him and for you. I remember once I went with a friend to Tel Aviv, to a city in Israel. We wanted to distribute books of faith and CDs of faith and we went in the darkest streets, alleys of Tel Aviv and we went over there and suddenly we saw a, a pub, a bar and we decided to go in that pub dressed like that and with the hat and with books in our arms and we went into that bar and we went in and we bought a small bottle of water and we're sitting and drinking our water and suddenly people start coming to us and asking us hey how what are you doing here what's going on and what are you what are you having what are you like books whatever and it becomes to be a yeshiva we were sitting over there and talking and giving a class in the middle of a bar, in the middle of a pub. And people came and told us, wow, thank you for coming. It's so amazing. It's inspiring. And what have we done? We just came. You think to yourself, I don't have a purpose in life and here I'm falling. You don't know from that falling which holy sparks you can bring up, you can uplift. You don't know. You don't know that every moment of your life you're in a mission of the Creator. And you think to yourself, I'm not supposed to be here. It's not supposed to be the path. I should be somewhere else. I should be in the Holy Land. I should learn Torah. I should be a billionaire until today. I should have a wife and five kids. I should have a house. At least one property, the minimum with no mortgage. Everyone got his illusions. But you not nullifying yourself to the divine will that needs you to be humble and in that position to achieve the purpose of your creation. And only when you will want whatever He wants for you, from you, you will find the wisdom, those holy sparks that are still missing to you from completing your life purpose. Only when you will nullify yourself completely to the understanding that you don't know, that you still miss the wisdom of the Creator, that no matter what you recognize and you see with your eyes, it's not yet the complete picture. Only when you will reach that understanding that you still don't know, only then you will get the permission to know more. And also then when you will know more, you should know that you still don't know anything. Like King Solomon Shlomo Melech said, Amarti echkema vehirechoka. What that I understood when I said to myself, I want to get wiser, is that I realized that it's still very, very far away from me. That was his conclusion. Thousands and thousands of years ago, that's exactly what that he understood. The wisest person of all human beings. He realized that when you want to find the wisdom of the Creator, first of all, you need to prepare yourself with that understanding that you don't understand anything. That you can receive the Torah only from the desert as a free gift. Mimidbar matana. Only when you're humbling yourself to know that you are dry like the desert. That you don't know anything. That you're flat and dry and hot. Like our ancestors, like Avraham Avinu, that it's written on him. That even after that he circumcised himself purified himself on the third day to the Milah. It's written on him that in that third day, after, after circumcising himself, after the Brit Milah, when he was already so old and so pure and so wise and finished his conversion and became a holy Jew and standing, it's written on him, Petach HaOhel Kechom Hayom In the entrance to the tent means not inside the holy tent of purity just still stuck in the entrance Kechom Hayom In the heat of the day Stuck Cannot come in 
even that he's so old and even that he's so holy and circumcised himself and he's the holiest person on earth and he's stuck in that doorstep in front of the holy tent and he cannot go in. Why? Only when you're finding yourself after three days after your conversion, finding yourself so stuck, so lost, then you can find the purpose of your life. What was the purpose of his life? To see those three merchant people walking in the desert, calling them, hey, come in. And with them, with those three people, he can go into the tent to feed them, to host them, to reveal the grace and kindness of the Creator. There is an amazing story on a person. I told it once, but I think like at least five, six years ago I told that story. And there was a person, and he born... Um, I think that he, he born in one of the religions. I think that he born Christian and and he was looking for purpose in his life and he was very religious, but he couldn't find the answers to his to his questions in Christianity. And he was asking and checking and, and talking to the priests and teachers during his life when he was a kid and, and, and a teenager and he couldn't find no answer. And then he started investigating and he asked himself which, which is the next like large big religion in the world and Islam was the answer for him and he said okay I'm gonna go and, and learn Islam, I'm gonna investigate and he started learning Islam and he really found many answers, it was very close to his heart and he decided to drop all Christianity and to be a Muslim. And he went and he was learning for years and years and years and he learned and learned and learned and still he had some questions. And while he was asking his teachers over there in Islam, he couldn't find answers to his, to his questions. And he started doubting Islam as well. And then he decided to go and, and to ask for a third option and Judaism was the last one for him, that's what he figured out. He said, okay, also Christianity, also Islam, both came out of Judaism. I'll go, maybe I'll, I'll check that source. And he went and he found Judaism and he felt like, okay, that's great. I found answers to all my questions, he found real strong powerful answers and he decided to convert to Judaism and he went and took six months, one year, one year, whatever, a process of conversion and he converted to Judaism and in the place that he was learning in the Shiva, everyone were talking over there about Mikveh. We know that Mikveh is the last stage before of conversion and he was so like expecting and hoping and dreaming on that holy Mikveh that he will dip in the Mikveh and he will become a Jew and he was so happy and in that day after the Brit Milah and everything that he did, it was the day of the Mikveh and he couldn't sleep all night and he was learning and excited, I'm gonna convert, I'm gonna become a Jew, excited and he went to the mikveh and he danced in the mikveh he was dipping and praying under the water and everything with heart with passion everything and after it they told him you're a jew welcome shook his hand hugged him there was a big party everything was perfect and then he sat and one day is passing and second day is passing and he's realizing nothing changed like i'm exactly the same same garbage I was <laughs> as a Christian, I am as a Muslim, and I'm finding myself the same garbage when <laughs> I'm Jewish, like, I have garbage in my mind, so <laughs> what can help, what's the difference between the religions so when you have garbage stuck in your mind, so I'm full of garbage. And he's sitting like that in the Beit Midrash, learning a holy Gemara, and suddenly he heard a thought in his mind, Maybe you made a mistake. And he said, that very wise person, in that moment I realized that I was right and I have not made a mistake. It was not a mistake. Why? When he heard that question, maybe you made a mistake. 
he realized that he was right converting to Judaism. Why? Because that was suddenly a foreign thought that went into his mind. Someone else in his mind asked him, maybe you made a mistake. Means that his evil inclination was a foreign inclination, was not his spirit anymore. And he found himself separated in his mind from his negative thoughts, from his sadness, from his lack of hope. So he realized from that one single thought that he is a holy creation, that he is a child of the Creator, and that he got enemies. And now he realized that he needs to fight with his enemies. So when you're realizing that you have enemies in your mind that are attacking you from all sides, surrounding you, shooting all over you, killing you, depressing you, breaking you, destroying you, mornings, noons, nights, evenings, midnight, before dawn, after the dawn, in the Netzachama, after Netzachama, you're dead, that's it, all day long being beaten and destroyed. The real lesson that you need to learn from it is that you are their enemy, that's why they're attacking you. So you're a holy soul. And I'm telling you that this story, moving from Christianity to Islam, from Islam to Judaism, that's not the purpose of why I told you that. I know many, many holy people that are still Muslims or still Christians and maybe even not on their path of conversion. Not thinking and not even dreaming about converting and don't even need to because they are holy souls in different religions. I'm not converting no one. I'm not converting you and not convincing you to convert or not telling you the importance of conversions. I don't know the importance of it. What that I do know is that no matter who you are, the Creator is with you and you have your own path and you must find it. Some of us needs to convert. Some of us found themselves Jewish and don't know the purpose of Judaism at all and doesn't help them to the fact that they're Jewish. Maybe even worse, don't know, they will be punished on certain things. I don't know what crazy life story they have. I don't know the answers to those situations because there are no rules. Every person must find the path of his life and the way to find that path is by being honest, by being a person of truth. And if you find in your inner honest investigation, looking for the truth, that the real answer for your life issues is to convert, go ahead. I bless you. I'm going to write a recommendation letter for you, a Muna project, recommending you're a follower, you're listening to my classes for years, I'm hugging you, whatever, I know you. Great, succeed, no problem. But there are souls that are messengers of the Creator and to complete and accomplish their life task, they must say, stay in their nations, in their place, and not to convert. And over there they will be much more powerful and useful for the purpose of their creation. And if they will convert, they're really going to convert only because that they are following their own fears. Because they're afraid not to have life in the world to come if you're not Jewish. Oh, now you want to tell me that the Creator that was hinting you from your first steps on earth, the same Creator that was showing to you uh, His existence when you were a child, will not gonna let you live forever because you have not converted? So why is He talking to you today? Why is He sending messages to you today when you're not Jewish? If he will punish you on not completing your conversion in 20 years or 50 years from now. It's nonsense. It's not the truth.
everyone can enjoy eternal life when they know that they are in the hands of the Creator. You're not allowed to follow your fears and not even to serve the Creator and God and the Almighty because you're afraid of Him. If you're afraid, it's because you don't know Him. If you would know Him, it's written in the Zohar HaKadosh, the book that's been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that if Am Israel would know how much the Creator loves them, they would chase after Him like lions. Lions they're not afraid of no one. Lions, they never stop running. They're powerful. It's the king of the animals. It's the strongest example on to how to be brave, how to be strong, how to be a king. They would serve like kings not like slaves. If you would know how much the Creator loves you, if you would investigate in that direction to find the love of the Creator, the reason of your creation, the purpose of your creation, the nature of you as a creation, the treasures that He treasured inside of you, the diamonds, the pearls, the good stones that He planted inside of you, those are your hopes and your dreams and your talents and your abilities and your prayers and your heart, your sensitivity and your kindness and your, your, your holy desires to make this world a better place, a nice place, a calm place, an amazing, fantastic world. That is the mission of your life. And that's who you need to be. And not all of us need to do it as Jewish. Also the redemption, when it will take place in this world, then, in that day, the temple in Jerusalem will be the house of prayer for all nations. Everyone will come and everyone will know the Creator and everyone will call Him in His name. You need to find Him and He is the truth. You need to find the truth. You need to be truthful. You need to be a loyal person. You need to connect and attach yourself to the inner voice of truth that speaks to you from inside. What is the truth about this situation? And what is the truth? And truth is kindness. Truth is good. Truth is generosity. Is all good attributes, all good manners. That's the truth. The truth is good. You want to attach yourself to the Creator, to live eternal life? You should know that all of your life experiences are coming to you for a good cause. From the hidden supervision of the loving, good Creator. That He sends His messengers and His messages to each and every one of us. To guide us in the path of truth. To reconnect ourselves through our own channels, through our own hearts, through our inner world, to be reconnected to the Almighty, to infinity, to the endless good, to the roots of our souls, to infinity, to the blessed one, to unity. And that's our mission. And conversion will not gonna do that for you. It might do it for him. Also to wear blacks and kippah and long beard and side curls is not necessarily your answer. It might be his or mine. For sure not hers. I don't know. You know what? Today, <laughs> who am I to judge? What do I know? You don't know. You should know that you don't know anything. <laughs> That's the answer to all your questions. Thank you very much. Chazak Emruna Project is a non-profit organization. We're asking from you, please guys, help us support our amazing activities. If it's online, if it's in our wonderful classes, help us, support us, and help us to save other people. To many, many people, our message is the answer and it's a lifeline for them, saving lives on a daily basis. So have the merit, have the privilege of giving a hand. Open your hearts and your wallets and support us. And by the merit of your generosity, they will bless you from heaven. That all your prayers and requests will be answered shortly. 
and with no obstacles and difficulties, a man can get it not so. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.